please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Catherine Holland from the Oxford Pain Clinic. So how did you get into this field? Um, well, I had um, a major accident. Somebody drove into me. Um, I was just learning to ride a small motorbike and I was riding home one evening after I'd been um, climbing for a couple of hours and then dancing to a local band. And I got on my little 125 and I rode back to Sally Hall. And somebody pulled out of a side turning and drove into my leg and smashed it up. And I lay bleeding in the road for some time. Yeah. So after that accident, um, I took a long time to recover. Mm -hmm. I had an external fixator in my leg and big skin grafts. And um, as time went on and I was beginning to get better, I was wondering how I could really improve things for myself. And um, fortunately for me, my orthopedic surgeon said one day, um, some massage would really help. And I thought, hmm. And I considered for a while, and I remembered a woman who I'd been to before, who treats injuries. Mm -hmm. And um, I rang her up, and she was willing to work on me, despite the fact that it was really quite difficult, because I still had big metal external fixator screwed into my leg and bandages all the way up it. <laughs> um, so yes, I asked her, I said, have you ever treated anybody with an external fixator in their leg before? And she said, no, but there's a first time for everything. And she clearly enjoyed the challenge and she did some wonderful work and inspired me to train later on. Yes. To do something similar to what she does. Yes. Does your leg hurt now? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't hurt at all. And I think that's because I had this treatment very early on. Um, because she worked very hard and very deep. It was very painful when she was working on me. Mm -hmm. But um, the upshot is that the, the tissue is free um, to move, certainly in the areas where it would have hurt if it weren't free. And so, um, no, I don't have any pain. So would you say you've made a full recovery from your accident? Um, I would as far as that's concerned. Um, unfortunately, I still can't quite bend my ankle properly, and I'm still working on that. Okay. Yeah. So what did you learn from the experience? Um, that's a really interesting question, actually, because for a long time, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't think I'd learned very much. But then I began to consider writing uh, my autobiographical account of the accident, which I'd been putting off, and um, I realised when I started to write it, and I felt quite ill when I did, that it was because it was such a traumatic experience, I didn't really want to relive it, which isn't surprising. Mm. But then I started to ask, why did I survive? Because on several counts, I discovered that if you lose more than 15% of your blood, you usually die, and I lost 50% of my blood and I didn't die. So I looked into why that was, and that was quite mm -hmm. interesting. And then I um, had a huge skin graft. The whole of my right thigh was taken, skin was taken to replace the skin that was pulled off my left calf. And, um, and that took 100%. And in my naivety, I didn't realise that that never happens. So that was another thing that I explored. And um, there were a number of other things that... that were unusual about it and um, so afterwards I thought quite long and hard about some of the factors that had influenced this. Um, the main one probably is that I was um, a rebirthing breath worker for about 15 years before the accident itself which was in 2000 and um, so my body was very clear and very clean. I'd also been a vegan for 20 years at that point and I only drink water so I think um, a lot of the reason I survived, especially the blood loss, was because my blood was clean enough so that when my kidneys and liver shut down to save blood to keep my brain alive, mm -hmm. I didn't die of toxicity because that's what you die of if you lose lots of blood. Um, and of course, I, I don't know, I didn't know that was why you died if you lost lots of blood. <laughs> so there are a number of factors that I've now studied about the availability of oxygen in the body 
and that's something that's become um, the nature of study for me at the moment. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's very interesting. It's absolutely amazing to think that you survived against the odds, and a mm. lot of that was about your lifestyle. Mm. I mean, can you explain now what you do and the science behind it? Oh, what I do in the actual work I do with people. Yeah. Um, well, I realised partly from my accident and partly from my training, I realised that the nature of um, old injuries, in particular traumatic injuries, is that many, many layers are affected. So from the skin down and through all layers of muscle, um, many layers of fascia, which is the very slippery, very fine, thin layer that looks a bit like um, tissue paper mm -hmm. between layers of muscle, um, it's designed to slip. And if you have an injury that breaks through many of these layers, the fascia is damaged and lots of layers stick together. And this is why you have dreadful pain and it's why you have lack of movement. So my main job is to work down through these layers, and I have my fist here just to show. Yeah. It's not a delicate art. No. It's quite firm, and it's quite uh, sometimes invasive. Um, I am deliberately trying to separate layers that are not sliding over as they should, and removing uh, scar tissue. Um, so we have scar tissue and adhesions. Scar tissue is bruising and damage that is solidified where the lymph has escaped and solidified. Adhesions are where layers have grown into each other. Both of those topics are subjects of separate videos which will be posted up on, the, um, on YouTube later. Um, so yes, what I'm effectively doing is resupplying blood to an area that's been damaged. And the, the method I use is to first of all clear away damaged tissue and that allows the blood to flow in mm -hmm. um, and also it allows new blood vessels to be made because what seems to be the major misunderstanding within Western culture is that healing can only take place if adequate oxygen comes to the area. Um, that seems now to be the real tenet of my understanding of illness and wellness and the difference between them. And it applies to all illnesses, not just to physical damage. Um, if something isn't working properly, you must resupply more oxygen, otherwise it cannot get better. But the, the wonderful news is that if you do, it will, even if it's been there for decades. Um, yeah, it's, it's extraordinary, the, the ability to, to recover. So. Um, in answer to your question about the science behind it, there are um, huge amounts of work that have been done by the Touch Institute in Florida, if anybody wants to look that sort of thing up. And um, even the British government has done what was known as the NICE report, um, which was a comparative study for people actually with back pain. Um, to show whether coming to somebody who works physically to increase blood flow or going to an osteopath or having acupuncture would help. And the, the answer was that they, all, they were all beneficial. And so the government recommends that GPs send people with, with lower back pain to any of those modalities because it will help them. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting to hear. Um, so... How long have you considered yourself an expert in this field? Um, well, I would say perhaps for the last six years, I've certainly felt as though I'm a lone practitioner in treating old injuries specifically. Mm -hmm. But even when I first trained, I discovered very quickly that with my knowledge and the, um, the, the, the training and qualification that I had, and applying it, that I could have some great results really quickly. So within the first few months of qualifying, and I suspect that the reason that I learned so quickly was because I had this personal experience, mm -hmm. and I had been working on my my own injury so determinedly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why did you choose this as your career path? Um, because it was the only thing that made any difference to my injury. And I realised, because I've now tried 45 therapists myself. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, a huge range of people. Huge, huge range. 
um, and found nothing else that even touches it. Because there's this, this actual work that I do that deliberately prizes things apart and deliberately um, works the damaged tissue away and, and persistently keeps doing it to work down through the layers. I seem to be the only person doing it in this way as a, as a sort of mechanical experience. Interesting. Yes. I mean, I know myself that you can heal things like repetitive strain injury, which I was really suffering with. And it's me, meant that I don't have to wear my support bandage anymore. And I can do more than I used to be able to do. But could you tell me a bit about your other clients and what injuries you've helped them with? Yes, yes. The, um, the most dramatic and perhaps my favourite are the really challenging ones. <laughs> so they've usually involved a huge impact. Either a road traffic accident or something like a skiing injury or a motorcycling injury where somebody has had a compound injury. Um, perhaps part of the reason they're my favourite is because they are so straightforward to make a profound influence on and the possibility of a full recovery is, is there. Mm -hmm. And people have usually been to many, many people before they come to me. Um, part of the reason for making this video is to let people know that it's actually possible with quite a straightforward technique to make the most extraordinary recovery and to make really quick progress. Um, it takes a long time to get back to 100%, but it doesn't take very long at all to reduce pain significantly mm -hmm. and to become more mobile. So you can make a sort of 20 or 30% progress within a week or two, which is amazing for somebody who's been crippled for, for mm -hmm. degrees. And it's a great yeah. alternative to surgery because obviously time off work, going into hospital, Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's yeah. very different ball game. Yeah. I mean, uh, after someone completes some treatment with yourself, um, how long would you expect the effects to last? After they've completed it, it should last forever. Excellent. Yes, it's permanent. Unless they... Uh, Unless they, they go and have another... Unless they do it again. Um, are there any side effects to treatment? Um, sometimes there are. Usually there are none. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have bruising. Sometimes they have um, some pain from the change in the way that their muscle structure is working. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if there are seven muscles involved going down through layers in an injury and I remove the damage to the top one, they then have pain in a different place. They then have something that appears like a different injury going on, which I do tend to warn them about because it's so common. Mm -hmm. So in effect, what you're doing is taking the pain away from the biggest, most outside one, and then you move down. And working your way through the layers. And quite often the pain on the outside is from um, a compensating problem rather than the actual injury itself. That's very common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, does it work every time with everyone? No, no it doesn't. Um, it works every time if the injury is soft tissue and muscular. Right. Um, and obviously if I can find it. <laughs> if somebody's had surgery that's gone right down into their body, sometimes I can't get to the place that needs the attention. Um, but also sometimes the surgery has damaged the nervous system. And so I can't get to go. Um, having said that, the other things turn out that I can't help usually turn out to be something different. So they turn out to be a systemic illness or even a tumour. And sometimes people have come to me with what appears to be a muscular problem, which actually turns out to be cancer, which of course I'm, I'm not pretending that I'm treating because that's not my, my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, what do you love about this business? Oh, yeah, what I love about it is the joy, the joy that it brings people. Um, it's Obviously, it's personified in them being able to do the things they love again. Um, that may be because they're keen sports people. It may be because they love to ride their bike or go skiing. Um, a lot of the time, it's more simple things, like being able to sleep through the night without pain. Mm -hmm. But um, 
yeah, I can't, I can't forget one of my classic um, patients who is a retired driving instructor. He'd injured himself as a teenager, as a keen recruit in Marines, training with a big rucksack, done too many clever things and really injured his back. And he'd carried that injury for, I suppose, 40 years. And I managed to get him moving again. He was happy as a Santa boy. And he came in, he jumped up and down on the spot. It was just lovely. I mean, wow. he was late 60s. And he came in, he said, look at me. He was <laughs> lovely. I mean, for me personally, it's the difference between being able to work 20 hours a week to being able to work 40 hours a week because with repetitive strain, I just have to stop before and now I can continue on. Yeah. Which is it, which obviously makes a big difference to me. Yeah, yeah. Super. Definitely. I mean, so what's your big vision? My big vision is for um, people to understand that by increasing blood flow and increasing oxygen to an area that they've injured, it will get better. Because currently that's not part of the mindset of the general population. Partly because it's not part of the mindset of Western medicine. But it just is not an understanding. So, for example, if as soon as you bash yourself, which I do from time to time, <laughs> but if as soon as you bash yourself, you rub it vigorously, and it's just a knock. Um, but even some quite bigger things, if you really injure yourself, if you rub above the injury, away from the injury towards your heart, you will increase the circulation before the damaged tissue has time to harden. Mm -hmm. And if you can work on it while it's still soft, you will never have an old injury. Excellent. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there were one thing you could teach the world, what would it be? It would be that your body has the ability to heal. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've covered a lot. Um, so if anybody wants to know more, how can they get in touch with you? Well, um, please feel free to phone um, or to email. There are ways to contact me on the website itself mm -hmm. um, but also uh, what we'll do is we'll put all of the information below the video on YouTube so that people can phone me to 